Today on the vlog we're discussing the opium coat pattern by Deer and Doe. If you want an honest and frank review, stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm really pleased to see you again. I hope you're all well. Um, just a quick note to say if you haven't subscribed yet hit that button below and let's get on with the video. This is actually my second go at recording this video so fingers crossed it goes a little bit more to plan this time. So what am I wearing? Now this is a top that I made last winter. It's called the Laundry Day Tea but I've actually made it into a dress. I don't know if you can see. So a little bit of backstory is um, when I first saw this coat pattern, I wasn't that taken with it, if I'm honest. I just feared that it would make me look bigger than I am. A few weeks later, I saw someone make it up and they used a belt and I absolutely fell in love with it and purchased the pattern immediately. I was so excited to make this. I thought I finally found a pattern that suits my figure. Um, so I downloaded the PDF and that was about 50 odd pages. I can't remember how many exactly, but I think it was around, that. it might've been like 46. So around the 50 mark anyway. And that went pretty swimmingly. I don't mind a PDF pattern, so I quite enjoyed that process. Now I decided I was going to make a twirl first because I didn't want to make a coat and have it not fit me. I did that last year with the Separo coat from Named and although although I can get away with wearing it, it doesn't really suit me so I wanted to just do a quick twirl for the fabric I used was this and it's a um, polyester wool from the textile centre, they won't have it now. I purchased this probably about two years ago. I actually purchased six metres of it to make another coat, but I never made it. So I ended up using half, so three metres for this coat and I have another three metres left. So at this point, when I decided I was making a twirl, I was actually going to do a sew along of this pattern. However, as you'll find out later in the video, that's not going to happen. So to ascertain the size that I was going to use, I looked at the measurements. Now Deer and Doe have recently increased their measurements to make their patterns more inclusive, which is fantastic. Um, and I looked at the pattern, I looked at the finish measurements as well, because I don't think it's a good idea just to look at the actual measurements, especially on something like this, which has loads and loads of ease in it. Um, I did think I probably still needed to grade up the bust area and possibly the waist, but definitely not the hips. Um, but I was being lazy, it was a 12, so I just decided to go with the biggest size and use a 3 8 instead of a 5 8 seam allowance. Now that was the first point where I went wrong, but we'll get on to that. So I cut out my shower and at this point I didn't cut out the lining, I decided to just get on with the shower. So I sh cut out the shower and I learned a new technique. Now I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that I have done a welt pocket before. I'm sure I have. I may have even done it on the Minoru coat, but anyway, I couldn't really remember it. So I followed the instructions. Now the instructions on this pattern are not great, I have to admit. They're good in terms of they go through every point, like it, it, almost to a laboured point to really help you understand, but I found them confusing. Now, I don't know if that's because they're originally written in French and then they're translated to English. It could be. It doesn't come across that that's the problem. However, I didn't find them very clear at all. Very luckily, at that point, Deer and Doe were starting to release blog posts on making this coat. So they were releasing blog posts on individual techniques, such as the wild pockets, or lining the fabric, or whatever, 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 yeah. Um, so as I was going along, I was following those tutorials as well, which were a massive help. Having the photographs really helped. The welt pockets went swimmingly. There was no issues 
whatsoever with them and I really enjoyed making them. Now I didn't finish any seams because this is a twirl. I didn't know if I'd even wear it to be honest and I just wanted it made quickly. Plus I couldn't be bothered to um, load my serger up with new thread. Um, so I just, I did pink some seams when it took my fancy but it's pretty hit and miss what seams I did pink. When I got to making the collar I found that really really difficult. Not the actual making of the collar wasn't difficult but following the instructions were confusing and I ended up with a bit of a shelf so if I show you on here it's just got like it goes in and it's almost like a bit of a shelf but it's not a shelf that you would need so I'm a little bit confused why it's because it's on a curve and I really I just I'm confused by that I don't know why it's come out like that I think possibly it's my error might be to do with me using the wrong seam allowance perhaps I also don't like this collar because if you look the lapel is really wide and then the collar is really tiny now I don't like that I prefer to have a wide collar so if I did redo this pattern I would redraft the collar and make it a bigger collar maybe add a collar from another pattern and I followed the instructions from the pattern and also the blog post regarding the collar and I still really struggled to make head nor toe of it so once I'd sewn up the raglan sleeves attached the collar and the side seams then I had a shell ready to try on now up to this point I was really excited about the pattern and this is where it changes so I tried on the pattern and I had a lump coming out of my arm which is to do with the shape of the pattern there but it was just like I had big lumps there and it just looked awful now where I think that's coming from I think where they've graded up the pattern with extra sizes the curve becomes more pronounced with each grading and I don't think it needs to be I think it needs to be the same all throughout um so I did end up actually shaving that off and also the arms came up very long so I took five inches off the end of the arms which I was later to regret but I'll get to that in a bit so at this point part of me really didn't want to go on any further with the pattern but another part of me really wanted to finish it I wanted it to have something to show you guys apart from anything else but I also need a coat the only ready to wear coat that I've got is a trench coat with big bow sleeves and I really I'm not that keen on it it's quite old now and I've had enough so I've also got the Separo coat that I made a couple of years ago but it's a cocoon shape and I don't think it suits me very well at all so I really need some new patterns so I decided that I was going to finish this come how or high water so at this point I needed to cut out the lining now I used a quilting cotton because I didn't have any silky fabrics available so I used this quilting cotton quite a pretty one and I think it's got grey in it so I think it goes with the grey of the shell so yeah so I had to cut out the lining and on the bottom of the hem the lining wasn't wide enough because it's a quilting cotton so it's fairly thin 115 centimeters I think so rather than my brain thinking oh I know what I'll choose a fabric with a wider width allowance no no didn't go down that road did I course I didn't this is me you're talking to um, I decided I'd trim off the pattern and make the pattern work instead shoot me now seriously um, I guess at that point I hadn't read through all the instructions thoroughly I was making it up as I was going along um, and so I didn't realize that the pattern was bagged out I thought the lining would be loose and so it wouldn't matter but actually because it was bagged out it did matter but I'll get onto that in a bit so once I cut out the lining I put the lining together which was really quick and simple it was just a matter of putting the raglan sleeves together sewing up the side seams so then I had to attach the facing to the shell and I attached that about four times for some reason I kept telling myself I'd attached it wrong there was only one way you could attach it but no 
I had to reattach it and reattach it and reattach it. A couple of times I walked away because it was late at night and I was overtired, so I thought that might be why I was getting it wrong. Um, but eventually I realised that I just had to get on and do it. Once I attached the face in, I had to create a line of stitching at the bottom so that when you turn it under, it was a nice seamless finish. Um, so when I attached the lining to the facing, I couldn't get it to go together for some reason. And it was my fault, not the patterns, I have to say. So I sewed the lining all the way around the facing, pull it inside out, then I bagged out the sleeves. Now Sean from Kittenish Behaviour has produced a video showing how to bag out the sleeves for her latest blazer make. And she had released that the day that I was doing this, so that was really handy and really helpful. Now, I did know how to do it, but I hadn't done it for a long time, so it was nice to have that refresher. And then if you don't know how to do that, do go and see Sean's video, because it's really helpful. I had to sew up the bottom of the coat, leaving a gap in the middle to bag it out. So you can't get right into the corners, so you just sew as far into the corners as you can and then up to your gap. And then I had to turn the coat in the right way and um, then I had to do a bit of hand stitching. So this is where the problem came in with me shaving off the bottom of the hem on the lining fabric because this is the bottom of the lining. And I don't know if you can see, but the lining, it just doesn't lay flat. And it's not the best way to show you here, holding it up like this, but I will insert some pictures at the end of me wearing it. Um, and I almost had to gather the shell into the lining to make it fit because there was two inches too much shell for the lining. And that works out about right because I shaved an inch off the side of the pattern, which because it was on the fold would have meant it was two inches. Um, so I won't be making that mistake again. Just a word about making the mistakes because I did make a fair few mistakes in this thing. And I want it to be a real um, video, a real review telling you the good and the bad of this pattern. I make mistakes. I've been sewing for four years and I still make mistakes. Um, but it's important to make those mistakes, I think, because you have to learn from them. You're not going to learn through doing everything perfectly the first time. So I actually take a really positive view of making those mistakes. I can't tell you how relieved I was to have finished this pattern. I was dragging my heels for days and days. Originally, I'd made it because I had an interview coming up. I decided I was going to make it in time for that. It didn't happen at all. In fact, it was nearly two weeks after that interview that I ended up finishing this. And then I dragged my heels even further because I needed to give it a really good press. Now, I didn't press as I was going along. That's another mistake. Even with a twirl, make sure you're pressing as you go along because um, I really noticed that it hasn't been pressed as we go. I eventually gave it a press and tried it on yesterday. I'm not going to lie, I haven't been keen on this pattern at all throughout the process of making it. I found the instructions really difficult. It wasn't fitting as I wanted it to fit and I, I just wasn't in love with it. And I had in my mind that I was going to make the Francis coat from Seamwork and so I just wanted to get on with that really. When I tried the shower on, the arms were dangling off me about five inches, so I cut five inches off so they would come up to my waist. But by the time it was finished with the lining, it come up to here and my whole, um, you'll see in the photos in a minute, that but my waist is exposed and I really don't like that. It's not gonna, it'll be fine because I'll either have gloves on or I have a long sleeve top on so it's not going to really be noticeable especially if my top's a dark top um but ideally they would have been had i not cut off the five inches they would have come at the right point of my rear the only thing left was to construct the strap which was straightforward it was just a rectangle i didn't even follow any instructions for that i just sewed a rectangle inside out turned it in the right way and whip stitched the edge that was still open shut. Now in the process I should have done some belt loops on the actual pattern but I didn't. So my 
belt will be loose but that's fine so my final thoughts on this pattern it's a beautiful pattern i cannot deny that it's a gorgeous design the main problem is i fell out of love with it in the process of making it and that was partly my fault partly the instructions as well if i hadn't been cutting corners perhaps i wouldn't have fallen out of love with it i think it was also the fabric that i used i'm not in love with the fabric and i am just using it as twirl fabric um, perhaps if I was using my lovely mustard twill that I've got that I've built into something really up there which isn't it was £10 a metre so it's not an extortionate amount of money perhaps if I was making it in something that I respected a little bit more then I would have enjoyed the process a bit more things I would change next time is I would definitely use a 5.8 seam allowance I think it needs that especially around the collar I would not trim the pattern hem down instead I would find a fabric that fitted the pattern piece onto it I could have also done a seamed back lining piece no one would know it's inside the coat i'm wearing the coat um it wouldn't have been an issue and i could have got the width that i needed that way i felt the instructions were unnecessarily difficult now i think that may be partly the way my brain works but there was definitely a struggle in the actual instructions um there's no photographs in the instructions themselves so that doesn't help matters. It was really beneficial that there was a blog post with pictures that helped massively. Although in the collar, I think I still didn't understand it properly. Yes, yes, I oh know. I have issues with the collar. I also wouldn't have shaved those five inches off the end of the sleeve and then they would fit properly but things i would still change is that i would shave the arm down because it was just it was a thing i don't know what thing it was but it was protruding now unless i had maybe they made it in mind for popeye because it would have fitted popeye lovely with all his muscles um but it, I don't know what was going on with that it might have even partly been the seam allowance i used there was at least an inch i needed to shave off so it wasn't all about the seam allowance now would i make this pattern again when i wrote my notes two days ago for this blog post i wrote i'm glad i finished it but i probably wouldn't make it again i've since tried the coat on worn it out i walked to the shops wearing it yesterday um, it's really comfy on it doesn't look bad I don't think it looks perfect on but it doesn't look bad um, I'm struggling to turn the collar down but that's just because I've got restricted movement in this arm at the moment my shoulder's still giving me a lot of jit um, so I'm not able to turn that collar down so my battery keeps dying so I'm just going to finish this quickly by saying that i may make it again it's gone down really popular on instagram so thank you for everyone who commented over there you could be larger than life bigger than the world living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl you could fly higher than the sky shine brighter than the stars you could have all you ever wanted shoot the moon and reach for miles you know you could I may make it again at some point but not at the moment I'm in the process of putting the PDF together for the Francis coat by Seamwork I would only recommend this pattern if you were an advanced beginner or beyond I would not recommend this pattern if you were a brand new sewer so if you like this video and would like to see more like it do hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment are you making a coat pattern at the moment what are you making i'm looking forward to summer so i can make lots of lovely summery dresses again if I, truth be told but i am looking forward to making my francis coat i intend to line that i've got some fleece fabric 
that I will interline that with. So it's going to be really warm and cosy once it's finished. I really can't wait. I'm going to quilt the lining as well. I know it's going to take me forever to get it finished and it'll probably be finished by March. So once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you who have subscribed, watched, commented or liked my videos. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye for now.